Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm the head tournament organizer for the 2022 World Tournament for War of the Ring. And this video is not actually going to be a game analysis video, but it will give you some information about the World Tournament. If you're not playing in the tournament, no problem, see you next video. If you are playing in the tournament, please continue to listen. Okay, I'm just going to talk briefly about the timeline, the players. I want to talk briefly about judges versus tournament organizers, and then go over the donations and prizes that we've received. Okay, so the timeline, right now, as of this week, I'm recording this on January 31st. I'm going to process all of the challenge invites, which is the external page uh, service that we're using to handle the Swiss pairings and we're going to do Discord setup. So if you have not yet heard anything from me, that's okay. We're still in progress. Don't worry. You should get something in the next day or two. On Friday, February 4th, round one is scheduled to begin. That assumes everything goes smoothly over this week. I anticipate it will. If not, I'll let you know. But uh, just as a reminder, once round one begins, you're going to play two games against the same opponent in a three-week period. So you're going to have three weeks and you have to play two games with them. It's your responsibility to schedule your game with that person. You should use Discord to communicate with them and set up a time. This is a world tournament, so people can be in any time zone. That's really fun and exciting, but you'll have to work out with them. Hopefully you can find a schedule that works. If you have problems, reach out to a tournament organizer and we can help you. Okay, please wait until I post an official, the tournament has begun message in Discord. You will see it. You won't miss it. It's going to be in the tournament announcements channel and I will notify all tournament players and say the tournament has begun. Until you see the message that the tournament has begun, the tournament has not begun yet. So just keep that in mind and uh, pairings will not be final until I say that the tournament has begun because often there are some minor adjustments that we have to do before it officially starts. So just wait until it has officially begun. So for now, wait patiently. Make sure you have Discord notifications turned on. Once you see the challenge invite, sorry for the typo, that's challenge invite, uh, please reply promptly to it. You'll have to sort of accept your invitation to the tournament. Once you see that the tournament starts, please reach out to your opponent promptly. The number one problem that we have in organizing the tournament is that opponents are unresponsive or people have dropped from the tournament and haven't told me about it and you're paired with somebody who's not responding. The most important thing that you can do to help the tournament run smoothly is just communicate effectively and promptly with your paired opponent. If they don't reach out to you, just let me know. Let any tournament organizer know and we can handle it. But that's the number one thing you can do to help the tournament run smoothly. Okay, I want to talk briefly about the differences between judges and tournament organizers, particularly because there are some people serving in multiple roles. All right, a judge is someone who will answer rules questions. So if you have, you're playing the game and you're actually in the game and you have a rules question, a judge is the person who will answer that. There are several judges and the head judge is Summer McLovin. If you get an answer from a judge who is not Summer McLovin, you may appeal it to Summer McLovin. But after that, once Summer McLovin makes a ruling, that ruling is final. There is no higher appeal. You can drop from the tournament if you want to, but you must, we need some place where the buck stops and for purposes of rulings on games, Summer McLovin is the final arbiter. The FAQ has been thoughtfully and carefully crafted by Roy and other people, and you should use it. Most rules questions like just how does this card work or what are the rules is, is already covered in the FAQ. So please use that first. But if you have any doubts, you can always ask a judge and just use at judges and you'll be able to get an answer. Okay, tournament organizers, that's me and also Summer McLovin, but mostly me, handle all player issues. So if you want to drop from the tournament or if you're having a problem with your opponent that's not related to the game that you're playing itself, but just other issues, then please contact tournament organizers. That's at tournament organizers on Discord and I am the head organizer. So if there's a question about the structure of a tournament or whether a player drops or what's going on, I will make the final call on that. Obviously the goal is for everybody to have fun. That's why we're playing this. There's not money on the line. We're just, we're just here to have fun, but I wanna be clear about where the responsibilities are. Okay, we had 126 players sign up for this tournament. That blows the previous record out of the water. I think the previous record was like in the high 70s. And so this is just an unbelievable growth. I feel so excited that we have so many players. 
35 players are returning from last year, which actually surprised me that it was so low. 91 players are new this year. Now that does include some people who played who played in previous tournaments long ago but didn't play last year. But either way, there's a huge number of new players and about 65 people self-reported as rookies. So I just want to welcome all of the new players. Uh, it's going to be a great experience. This is this is wonderful. We have so many new players. A lot of people are going to be experiencing the tournament for the first time. So welcome, welcome. Really happy to have you. Okay, I want to give just one sort of rule reminder slash etiquette thing. The In my experience, the most common rules mistakes are forgetting about Worn with Sorrow and Toil or forgetting about the Witch King's ability. So I just want to clarify because in a previous video I said that the Witch King ability was mandatory. It's actually not. It's it's optional. So both of these effects, Worn with Sorrow and Toil and the Witch King's ability to draw a card at the end of the round, th that is Shadow's responsibility to remember. Because this is a tournament game, we are expecting people to play at a higher level of skill and part of that is remembering the optional effects that you have. So that is Shadow's responsibility. Nonetheless, I'm just asking from a sportsmanship perspective, from a sort of uh, friendliness perspective, if you're playing against a rookie in round one and you're the free people, maybe remind them. It's not, it's not required. I, I cannot require that. But I'm just saying, like, let's, let's just be friendly and welcoming. And I think one of the ways of doing that is with people who are getting used to the Java client. It's, it's easy to miss everything that's on the board. So let's just maybe remind rookies. Uh, again, not required. I'm just suggesting it. I will certainly be doing that in my round one game. Okay, because we have a lot of rookies. Okay, if you have a rules question, number one thing to do during the game is look in the FAQ. The link is tinyurl.com slash W-O-T-R-F-A-Q. That's where to find it, and there are tons of things in there. If that does not answer your question, or if players disagree in any way, just ask a judge. There are judges available basically 24 seven, and you just do at judges in the rules questions channel and you'll get an answer. Okay, the last thing that I wanna talk about are the donations and prizes. So I was absolutely blown away by the number of people who donated. Some people donated a lot, some people donated a little, but just the number of people who donated was, um, was just mind blowing. I did not expect it. I thought we were gonna get like a handful of a few people would donate, but a lot of people donated. And if, if you didn't donate or you couldn't donate, obviously that's totally fine. It's a free tournament. Um, but for the people who did donate, and there were a lot of you, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I think it's gonna make, um, it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna make the tournament more fun. So currently I have a total of $574 that, were, that has been donated as of today by a lot of different people. So we're definitely gonna have the money to cover plaques for this year. And because last year I, I failed to sort of organize the donation collection, we didn't actually have any uh, physical prizes last year. Um, so I think we should also be able to cover, with that much money, we should be able to cover the plaques for last year too. Plaques seem to be about $75. If you have leads on a better deal for plaques, let me know. Um, but. I'm also thinking about, because there were so many people who donated this year, I'm thinking about maybe we can do some other bonuses. Um, so I'll, I'll announce that when I have more details, but um, I just, just thanks again for the generosity. Hopefully that'll be really great for uh, people. Okay, so if you have any questions about this video or the structure of the tournament, please ask um, in the tournament general quest, uh, channel on Discord and just do at tournament organizers and we'll respond. But thank you very much and I uh, hope you all have a wonderful time in the tournament and um, have a great day. Thanks.